Hi, welcome to another example in my series on solving trig equations. Now in this example we've got to solve 2 sine theta minus 3 cos theta equals 1 for theta between 0 to 360 degrees inclusive. Now whenever you get equations like this okay they have a particular format. What is that format? Well that format is often referred to as a sine theta minus b cos theta equals another constant c. a and b are constant. When I compare it to what we've got here a is 2. Be careful with the b. b is not minus 3. b is actually 3 because we've got the minus corresponding with this minus here. So b is 3. And the constant C is the 1 on the end. So whenever you get equations like this, what we do is we look at the left-hand side of the equation. That is A sine theta minus B cos theta. Now, expressions like this can be written in another form. And that form is another constant, often referred to as R, and for this one it will be sine of the angle, in this case theta, minus another angle, alpha, we'll say. And it can be shown that r is always equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared, and alpha is always the inverse tan of b divided by a. So definitely try and learn this particular identity. So returning to this example, let's just bring a line down there. Returning to this example, let's just recap. We've got that A corresponds to the 2 and B corresponds to 3. So this would be the thinking behind doing this question. So we take the left hand side of an equation like this. So we say that now 2 sine theta minus 3 cos theta, we can express this in one trig function. And by using this identity, that trig function is just going to be sine. So we can say that this is identical to r sine of theta minus alpha. And we need to calculate the value of r and alpha. Well, r, as we've just seen over here, is the square root of a squared plus b squared. And a is 2 and b is 3, so that's 2 squared plus 3 squared. And if you work that out, you've got the square root of 13. So put that down there. I wouldn't bother, by the way, working this out any further. Square root of 13 would be a horribly long infinite decimal. So you'd only have to round it up. So we don't want to fuss with that. We now need to work out alpha. So we know that alpha is always equal to the inverse tan from here of b over a. So that would be the inverse tan of 3 over 2. So 3 over 2, there we go. Work this one out on your calculator. Remember to be in degrees mode, so check your calculator out for that. So if you do that, you should find you get 56.309 and so on degrees. So putting this all together, what we've got is that 2 sine theta minus 3 cos theta can be written in this format. So if we write that in, we've therefore got r, which we know is root 13, sine of theta minus alpha. Alpha is 56.309 and so on degrees. So we've written the left hand side in this format and it now equals 1. So what we've been able to do is change our equation into one trig function. And in this example, that trig function has been 
sign. So what do we do next? Well we need to get towards this angle here inside the brackets and so we need to divide both sides by square root of 13 so we'd have sine of theta minus 56 odd degrees equals 1 over root 13 and then take the inverse sine of both sides and that would leave us with theta minus 56.309 and so on degrees is equal to the inverse sine of 1 over root 13. Alright? Now at this point we could work out what the inverse sine of 1 over root 13 is on the calculator so if we do that you should find you get 16.102 and so on degrees. Now to get the other solutions what I prefer to do is use a quadrant diagram so if I was to draw a quadrant diagram here with naught degrees there we would go round anti-clockwise to go from naught to 360 degrees. Now we were taking the the sign of this angle was 1 over root 13 and 1 over root 13 is positive and sine is always positive in the first quadrant and the second quadrant. So in the usual way draw two lines equally inclined to the horizontal marking these two angles as being the same. Now where would we find our solutions? Where would we find our theta minus 56.309 odd degrees? Well that would be the first angle here turning from here all the way to the first blue line that's a possible theta minus 56.309 and so on degrees so mark that in there starting again from here turn to the next blue line so we turn round to there and that too is another possible theta minus 56.309 and so on degrees so where does this 16.102 degrees feature well clearly in this diagram this is this turn here which is the red angle and it's also the same as this blue angle this blue angle in here is 16.102 so that means that this one over here is also 16.102 so to get the green angle I've got to do 180 degrees minus 16.102 degrees so what does that give us well, doing that on the calculator, I get 163.897 and so on degrees. Now, in order to get theta, I need to add 56.309 and so on degrees to each of these angles. So if I do that, then theta is going to equal 72.412 and so on degrees and for this angle here we get 220.207 and so on degrees. So all I need to do now is just round these up to any suitable degree of accuracy. I'm going to choose one decimal place so therefore if I round both of them up to one decimal place I've got theta equals 72.4 degrees and for the other one 220.2 degrees. Put in here what your accuracy is and so I've done both to one decimal place. Okay so we've got the solutions then to our equation. So hopefully you are able to follow my methods here and so if you get an equation then like this in this format you can solve it by using a method like this. Alright, and that brings us now to the end of this example.